Welcome back to Business Line and our special segment on mutual funds. I'm joined by Aarti Krishnan, who heads the Research Bureau at Business Line. Last week, Aarti and I looked at the different types of mutual funds and the different kinds of investors. What do we have in store today, Aarti? Hello, Rajiv. Over the last two episodes, we've gone over what a mutual fund is, what are the different types of uh, categories of funds available and so on. But why don't we first look at whether the entire effort is worth it? I mean, what have funds actually delivered to investors who managed to put money into them over the last five years or so? Great. So let's compare uh, mutual funds versus, let's say, gold and some other commodities uh, over the last five to ten years. Uh, basically, what, invest, what investment returns you would have made from a mutual fund would have depended on what category of fund you chose. Uh, I talked about debt funds, equity funds and so on over the last two programs. Uh, so if you chose the equity fund category and if you managed to choose the good ones, uh, your money would have gone up four times in five years. That is if you invested 1000 rupees five years ago, today you would have over 4000 rupees. Mm -hmm. Now that's a splendid return and not many investors even in the global context are lucky to make this kind of returns. Uh, if you compare that to a, a gold investment, for example, uh, gold uh, would have given you 2,500 rupees at the end of that five-year period. Uh, if you looked at uh, fixed deposits, suppose you put it in a 10% FD, that money would be worth 1,600 rupees. And if you just let it lie in your uh, savings bank account, you would just have 1,200 rupees. So the difference between understanding mutual funds and taking that risk is between 4,000 rupees and just 1,200 rupees. Interesting. Now, just this week, Aarti, I read in the newspapers, um, people diversify their risk. They hedge their risk by investing in gold. That's another strategy they use to uh, stabilize their returns over a long-term period. Would you recommend that? I would. Uh, typically, what I would say is don't compare equities and gold as alternative investments. Both need to be in your portfolio. Typically, what happens with gold is in the recent years, if you've noticed, whenever the stock markets don't perform, whenever the other commodities do not perform, that is the time when gold prices really surge and deliver those returns. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you have gold in your portfolio as a part of your long-term holdings, uh, if there is a period when your equity mutual funds fail you, mm -hmm. uh, like 2008, that is the period when you can expect your gold investments to act as an anchor. So what I would suggest is that uh, uh, have a 5 to 10 percent allocation in your portfolio towards gold also. Let's also talk about past returns versus future. I mean, I, I, you just said uh, some equity funds quadrupled in oh. value over the last four or five years. But of course, past performance is no way to judge future performance. How do we look at that uh, as an investment vehicle we, when we don't really know how a fund will perform in the future? Right. Uh, as I've told you, a mutual fund can only perform the way the underlying securities do. Right. So uh, when you say an equity fund will deliver a 20% return or a 15% return, that is contingent on the stock market actually delivering that kind of a return over the next 5 years or 10 years. Right. Uh, now, the argument that the stock market can deliver a 15% return is based on the fact that India is a very fast growing economy. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, people expect that over the long term, we will be able to grow our economy at 8% a year. Mm -hmm. Now, if you add an inflation of 5 or 6% to that, uh, that comes up to about uh, uh, 13 or 14% return. Mm -hmm. Now, large companies in India should certainly be able to match the GDP growth. Mm -hmm. So, when companies are able to grow at that pace, you expect the stock prices also to keep up with that. Right. So that, the, thus comes the argument for saying that actually equities can deliver a 15 to 20 percent return. Of course, the last five years have been exceptional and I would warn investors not to expect a repeat of that. If you get a repeat of that, great. But uh, budget for a 15 to 20 percent return from your equity mutual funds over a five-year period. Mm -hmm. Now, comparing past performance to future expectations, um, uh, we should also mention maybe you know those expectations and mismatch applies to gold investments as well. True. Right, gold uh, prices would be dependent and its rise or fall would depend exactly. on demand and supply pressures. Exactly. Just because gold did really well in the last four years doesn't mean it will actually do equally no. well in the future. No. Actually, gold's performance is a function of different factors from what drives equity investments. Equity investments are driven by how companies perform and how the economy performs. Gold is basically a function of international gold prices. Now, international gold prices do well when, uh, when there is a crisis situation, mm -hmm. which is why you found that in the last uh, one year particularly, gold has done exceptionally well. 
typically if people flock to gold as a safe haven investment when all all else fails you go to gold uh, as a last resort investment the second factor is that when inflation is high people feel that the value of their paper money is eroding so they like to hold real assets like gold the third factor is that there's a lot of worry nowadays about how governments across the world are printing a lot of money without really exercising any moderation because in an effort to save uh, the economy from this crisis, people are going all out spending a lot of government money in public works and so on. So that leads to a devaluation of the uh, paper money that you hold. That is typically a condition that is very favorable to gold prices.